There are two major ways how you can use PySpark. You can either write a script and submit that to the cluster, or you could spawn an interactive shell. Now, just to get a good overview of what is actually inside the Spark folder, run ls inside the Spark folder. So we're just gonna say ls and then the Spark folder. And the most important folders you will interact with are bin, conf, and sbin. Now the bin folder contains all the relevant binaries um, to interact with Spark. So let's ls into the bin folder. For example, you can use the PySpark binary to um, start an interactive PySpark shell on your cluster. Um, if you run that command, given that you've configured Spark properly, Spark would fire up and you would be greeted inside an interactive Python session already connected to the cluster. Um, we have already interacted with the conf folder, so here you can create all the necessary configurations for your cluster. So let's check conf folder. And remember that when you are using a fresh install of Spark, you will only find the .template files. You can copy those files, remove the .template ending, and they will become real configuration files. Inside those configuration files, you would specify the properties you would like to set. Now the SBIN folder contains command line scripts that are used to start and stop services. So let's ls in that folder. And as you can see by the .sh ending, those are shell scripts you can execute. Remember that we defined a list of all the machines we want Spark to start slaves on inside the slaves file on the conf folder. If we would execute the start-all.sh script, Spark would create a master on your current machine and create slaves on all the machines listed in the slaves file inside the conf folder. And for this to work, you must enable passwordless SSH on all machines you want to start slaves on. So let's just use the start-all.sh command. So we're just gonna say, so remember, I am still in the working directory. We're gonna use the start hyphen all sh command inside the Spark folder, inside the bin sbin folder, and it's start hyphen all sh. Hit enter. And this just created a Spark cluster on our machine. Now we can check that everything is working by invoking the web browser user interface. Um, just open up a browser and enter the following URL into it. So we're gonna, just gonna say localhost colon 8080. Now remember that we did not create any configurations, hence Spark created a single node cluster under localhost. Um, given default uh, configurations, you can access the web UI on the master IP. So the master is on localhost, so it's localhost, and then port 8080. Uh, note that there is a URL, so right over there, that says spark colon slash slash Debian colon 7077. And that URL must be used to connect our applications to our cluster. Now let's just copy the spark URL, so make sure you copy that. All right, so let's first start with the most easiest use case, running PySpark in an interactive Python session. If you've configured Spark properly, this is actually extremely simple. Just execute the PySpark file inside the bin folder and add the Spark URL as an argument to the master option. So I'm just gonna say Spark bin PySpark, and then you say master is located at whatever um, Spark URL you got. All right, you will be greeted with a Python prompt. Notice that this prompt is already connected to the Spark cluster. For that, a variable called Spark was already created in your environment. So if we enter Spark, we will see that we have a variable over here. That's a Spark session. You could now write all sorts of Python code. So for example, you could say print hello world, and it would run. Um, we can use methods on the Spark variable to interact with the cluster, such as reading files into PySpark data frames. But first, let's exit the application. So let's just exit. And the interactive session was terminated. Of course, the cluster is still running. Alternatively, we could create a .py file and submit that to a cluster. So let's do that. And for this, we will create a simple script in our working directory and submit that to our Spark cluster. So we're just gonna use the nano editor. And let's call that file test.py. And we save that in our home directory. 
Now inside that script, we first need to create a Spark session, which is done automatically and saved as a Spark variable in an interactive PySpark session. However, since we are not using the interactive shell, we must do it ourselves. First import Spark session from PySpark and then construct a session like so. Okay, so first we're gonna import the Spark session. So we say from PySpark.sql import Spark session and look at uh, or notice the capital letters here. Next, we're gonna create uh, the connection to our Spark cluster and we're gonna save that to um, the Spark variable and that is equal to Spark session dot builder. So we're building a connection. Then we give the app a name and let's call it example app. And then get or create. So in this case, we're going to create the Spark session. And then you can just enter Python code. So let's just say print hello world. All right. And then you can exit and save. And in this script, we build a Spark session and uh, save that session to the Spark variable. And next we just print it hello world to the screen. So let's just submit that file to Spark. And this is actually pretty similar to invoking the PySpark shell. So instead of using the PySpark command in the bin folder, we are gonna use the spark hyphen submit command. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use, or we go into the spark folder, oops, sorry. So we're gonna enter the spark folder, then inside the bin folder, and then we're gonna use the spark hyphen submit. And the first argument we're gonna give is the master, of course. So the master is the same as before. It's uh, the URL we've got. And next we gotta give it the path to the Python file. So that was located in our home directory and it was called test.py. Now it's submitting it to our Spark cluster. So I know a lot of stuff gets printed to the screen. However, as you can see over there, it says, hello world. It was just printed to the screen like we asked. Hence, it seems that everything is working just fine. Now I will stick to the interactive PySpark session for most what we do, since I think it is much better suited for showing concepts than writing static Python code inside a text editor.